Wow, kind of sucks to be a Bernie supporter right now, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard by now about the email scandal that has plagued the Democratic National Committee. Debbie Wasserman Schultz has resigned her position, so on and so forth. And I made a previous video where I said that no matter what happens, I'm not going to vote for Jill Stein. I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton just because stopping Donald Trump is that important and making sure that he never gets anywhere close to the White House is important enough that I'm willing to swallow my distaste and vote for a candidate I don't like. Do I still feel this way after this revelation? Well, yes and no. You see, I knew from the get-go, right when Bernie lost the nomination, that this election was not going to be one that I would be happy with any choice. If I vote for Green and I vote third party, I'm inadvertently helping Donald Trump because Hillary Clinton needs to beat him. If I'm voting for Hillary Clinton, I'm voting for someone I dislike and who pretty much embodies the establishment I've railed against, all to stop someone who's pretty much a fascist in all but name. And now we have revelations that really don't surprise me, actually, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz did what she could to help Hillary Clinton get the nomination and make sure Bernie Sanders couldn't get to it. And I think we could all see this, or at least like we could infer it based on the Democratic debate schedule and just based on the way the superdelegates endorsed Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. But even so, it's still pretty disturbing that a democratic institution was interfering in the primaries to get rid of a candidate they didn't like. It should be worth noting that superdelegates only exist because after reforms in the democratic primaries in the aftermath of the 1968 election, candidates like George McGovern and Jimmy Carter got the nomination and the Democratic Party didn't like that their rank and file had more influence over the process than they did. Hence, superdelegates. So it's pretty obvious that the Democratic Party wants control over the process and doesn't want the party going in directions it doesn't like. And now Bernie Sanders showed us with the platform that you can have incremental changes to the process be made, and it's not a total loss. I mean, Bernie has significantly shifted the discourse to the left, but with these email revelations, we are basically being shown that the Democratic Party is a corrupt institution, that even if we try to influence the process, unless we're so numerous they can't ignore us, in the end the establishment will prevail. I'm still probably going to vote for Hillary Clinton in November, but wow, I feel an incredible amount of reluctance right now. I mean, it's not as if the situation is going to appreciably change in terms of why I want to practically vote for her. I really doubt that Jill Stein is going to do well enough to get into the debates. I really doubt that any other third party candidate is going to emerge in the, what, four months we have until the election. So now, even though I still am probably going to vote for Hillary, I'm even less enthusiastic about it than I was before, and that's really saying something. Do you guys agree? Because I really don't know at this point. I mean, this tells me that we can't trust the Democratic Party as an institution to achieve the change that we as progressives want. We can't trust that party to respect our decision if we go against the precious orthodoxy that they love so much. They can't risk us changing the discourse ever so slightly from the neoliberal third-way consensus that allowed Bill Clinton to dismantle the New Deal back in the 90s. Now, I think the situation in the Democratic Party is more fluid than people are giving it credit for. Maybe it will be possible to change the institution over time. I mean, after all, these are two institutions that have changed dramatically over the 150 years that they've existed, the Democratic and Republican parties. So, what do you guys think? I'm at a loss. Should we still support Hillary even though it's pretty obvious that she is not the candidate we want? Should we basically stay, say fuck it and go home? Or should we vote for Jill Stein? I'm still in the Hillary camp if for no other reason than Donald Trump needs to be stopped, but I'm open to having my mind changed, so let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for listening. Andrew Walker out.